Ellie De La Cruz often hears his name in the same sentence as Francisco Lindor, the Mets dynamo and one of baseball's top shortstops. This comparison isn't just for show. It's a quick way to say, this kid's got talent. Major League scouts certainly got the message, swarming to the young man's academy in Santo Domingo, the bustling capital of the Dominican Republic. But let's be clear, back in 2018, those scouts weren't there just for Ellie De La Cruz. At just 16 years old, De La Cruz was one of the countless lean Dominican baseball prospects dreaming of the big leagues on their island nation. And while Cruz and Lindor might have trained under the same mentor, he wasn't Lindor. He was just another kid from the Dominican Republic with a bat and a dream. While Lindor was showing off scouts, De La Cruz was stuck on the sidelines. He was too lean, too green, they said. Yeah, De La Cruz loved baseball, but he couldn't shake off the frustration. He'd been chasing this dream for over a decade. The youngest of nine kids, he left home at six to live with a relative and focus on baseball. His journey was meant to climax with a pro career, or at least a contract. But by 2018, with nothing to show for all the hard work and sacrifice, he considered hanging up his cleats. But just as it seemed like his dreams were falling apart, an unexpected opportunity arose. The Rockies and Blue Jays came to see him but didn't make any offers. However, Richard Jimenez, a seasoned scout for the Reds, saw potential in him. That same night, De La Cruz got a call asking him to show his skills for the team again the next day. One day after that second showcase, he managed to bag a deal for $65,000, making it official when the international signing period kicked off on July 2nd. Now, to someone like De La Cruz, who thought he might not even make a team, this was a big deal. But in the grand scheme of things, especially compared to those million dollar deals the stars are raking in, 65K doesn't stretch that far. After dedicating a decade of his life to baseball, he had hoped for more. Still, while the paycheck might not seem top Latin American prospect for him, it was the golden ticket to pro baseball. And let's just say, he's gone from being a wallflower to a headliner. Once overlooked, De La Cruz is now a top 100 prospect. In the span of three years, he sprouted to a whopping 6 foot 5 and 200 pounds, lean yet sturdy, with raw power that's just waiting to be harnessed. Scouts are calling out 70 grades on his speed, arm strength, and raw power when he's at bat. He got his feet wet in the Dominican Summer League with the Reds, showing promise by hitting 285, 351, 382, with a home run and three stolen bases in 43 games, mostly playing shortstop. The kid's 2020 season got benched, like everyone else's, because of the COVID-19 pandemic. During the pandemic-induced suspension of the 2020 minor league season, a period that also saw a downsizing of the minor leagues and numerous players being let go, De La Cruz knew he needed to step up. He had a burning desire to prove that he was more than just an ordinary player. His aim was not just to get by, but to truly shine. The next time he took to the field, he was resolute in his intention to make a lasting impact. His mentality was focused on one thing. If he wasn't good enough for the 2021 season, his career in the Reds organization would come to an abrupt end. Before he knew it, Reds farm director Sean Pender had taken notice. After only 11 games in the Arizona Complex League that summer, which was De La Cruz's first rodeo on American soil, it was clear that he was outgrowing the place. Pender had been hearing all these awesome things about De La Cruz, from his spring training performance to the start of the rookie league season. It was obvious to everyone that De La Cruz was just too hot for the Arizona Complex League. At first, Pender was a bit cautious, thinking they should take things slow and steady with De La Cruz's development. Despite this, he decided to check him out himself in Goodyear, Arizona, and boy was he impressed. After seeing De La Cruz's performance up close, he knew the kid couldn't be kept in the same league. Once 2021 rolled around, De La Cruz was back on the diamond, splitting time between the Arizona Complex League Reds and single-A Daytona Tortugas. With the Tortugas, he cranked seven triples, the second highest in low-A Southeast. Over 61 games, he hit 296, 336, 539, with eight dingers, 42 RBIs, and 10 stolen bases, mostly playing third. His performance didn't go unnoticed. Baseball America crowned him the best player in the Arizona Complex League, the fourth best player in the Low A Southeast League, and the best athlete and fastest base runner in the Red System. With an impressive batting record in the Arizona Complex League under his belt, 
De La Cruz was quickly bumped to low A, playing against guys who were, on average, about two years older than him. Even before this, De La Cruz had been on the Reds' radar. Pender made it clear that any fears De La Cruz might have had about being let go due to the contraction of the minor leagues were totally unfounded. He was just too darn good and showed a deep understanding of the game to be shown the door. Plus, the kid was physically impressive. He had shot up by four inches between 2019 and 2021. Pender couldn't help but be impressed when players turned up at spring training looking beefed up. But even the most promising players need a minute to get used to their new and improved abilities. De La Cruz seemed to adapt pretty fast after the 2020 season. Sure, his physical development played a major part in his improvement, but he was also putting in the work. He'd spent the previous year training hard with a personal trainer who helped him build up his leg strength, which made him faster with the bat, a key ingredient for a powerful hitter. He started throwing harder and legging it around the bases faster. He credited these improvements to his intense training. Despite all the hype though, some folks are a still bit skeptical. History has plenty of examples of super talented athletes who didn't quite manage to fully develop their raw skills. De La Cruz did strike out more than 30% of the time last year, which some batters can pull off, but not when they're only drawing walks 5% of the time. Still, Pender reckons that a lot of folks might be missing a key point about De La Cruz. He's been in the game for decades, mostly as a top-notch scout, so his opinion carries weight. And according to him, De La Cruz is one of the smartest baseball players he's ever seen for his age and experience. Before De La Cruz's growth spurt, his potential was almost off the charts. Scouts rate players on a 20 to 80 scale, looking at their current value and their future value. When De La Cruz was a skinny 17-year-old in the DSL, his current value was a low 20 on that scale. But his future value was a whole lot higher. Pender saw him as a star in the making. These days, De La Cruz has grown taller and stronger, and his potential has grown too. He's not always consistently amazing, but when he is, he's really something. Even with all his natural talent, De La Cruz isn't just relying on his athletic abilities. He's a smart player who knows the game inside and out. He remembers his early training days in Santo Domingo where the focus was always on the basics. Sure, De La Cruz has some things to work on. He's been guilty of swinging at any old strike, admitting to once swinging so hard on a 3-0 pitch that he practically flew out of his shoes. He'll have to figure out the difference between a good strike and a bad one. He's been known to take a swing at anything, even balls in the dirt, but he's determined to improve. In 2022, De La Cruz was a force with the high A Dayton Dragons and double A Chattanooga Lookouts. He played mostly shortstop, showing off his power and speed. He represented the Reds in the All-Star Futures game. In total, he hit 304, 359, 586, with career highs in homers, 28, RBIs, 86, and stolen bases, 47. He was the first minor league player since George Springer in 2013 to bat 300 with at least 25 homers and 40 stolen bases. All these feats got him tons of accolades, including being named the Reds Minor League Player of the Year and Baseball America's Reds Minor League Player of the Year. De La Cruz kicked off the 2023 season with the AAA Louisville Bats. In 38 games, he hit 298, 398, 633 with 12 homers, 36 RBIs, and 11 stolen bases. It was clear this kid was something special. Then, on June 6, 2023, De La Cruz finally made his big league debut, stepping in to fill the void left by an injured Nick Senzel. At just 21, he was the fifth youngest player in the National League. Standing tall at 6'5", he's one of the highest reaching shortstops in MLB history. And talk about speed, he's up there with the fastest dudes in baseball. On June 7th, De La Cruz hammered his first big league homer, a jaw-dropping 458-foot bomb. Just a couple of weeks later, on June 23, he hit for the cycle in a game against the Atlanta Braves, making him the youngest player to pull off that feat since Cesar Cedeno back in 1972. He kept up the momentum in July. On the 8th, he became the first Reds player since Greasy Neal in 1919 to steal second, third, and home in the same inning. Eight days later, he threw a bullet for the fastest infield assist on record, clocking in at a staggering 97.9 miles per hour. Despite only playing 30 games before the All-Star game, De La Cruz has already left his mark. He's in the top 2% of the league for exit velocity, He's the fastest player in the game, and he's got the strongest arm among all infielders. 
No wonder everyone's keeping their eyes on this kid.